Alrighty gang, welcome back. This is the series where I review old films, new films, films I haven't seen before, TV shows and everything in between. And today we are doing an Aussie classic, maybe the most Aussie classic of all time, I think. Uh, today is The Castle. You make me sick. His coral time trident screeches fancy like in the tempest. Yeah, well, I love it. Everything that's good that's happened to me in my life came because of that. A classic Aussie film, maybe the most classic Aussie film of all time, like I said before. Um, and if you don't believe me, I'd probably tell you that you're dreaming. So like I said, because this is a classic Aussie film, um, I'm going to try and take off my nostalgia glasses here because I feel like any Aussie kid who grew up in the 90s, especially early 90s like I did, um, sort of knows this as the pinnacle of Aussie films, the classic of all Aussie films. Um, straight to the, straight to the pool room, straight to the trophy room, straight to the, like, tell, you tell them you're dreaming, what's he asking, just so many fucking crazy awesome lines came from this film. Okay, anyways, taking off nostalgia glasses for the moment, I'm gonna go into proper critical review mode. Oh yeah, it's also been, it's been over two decades since I've seen this movie. Over two decades, over 20 years. Yeah, I'm fucking old, and it's, this is... Ugh. I guess comparatively, in Aussie culture, this would be like a Midwest story. So this would be the folksy Midwest underdog standing up for your rights sort of story that we see so much come out of like American film and Hollywood and stuff. Um, this would be the Australian equivalent of that. And in saying that, the cinematography perfectly matches that vibe. It matches the grounded and underdog vibe of it all. So we see a lot of exposition at the start of this film, um, and a lot of narration that goes on throughout the rest of the film. I know that, thinking about it now, if we didn't have the narration knowing what was going on, why people were sad about what certain things and all that sort of stuff, I, don't, I just don't know if you would have cared as much. Um, so even though I'm not a big fan of narration in films, and I'm not a big fan of the overuse of exposition, um, I think it was done well enough in this film. I think it was done well enough. Um, so even though I did try and take off my nostalgia glasses, there are a few notes which I've written which are just like really unbelievably... <laughs> It's just me being like really excited to watch the movie again. I might've had a few drinks when I was watching this, but it doesn't really matter. Anyways, mm. I wrote just very, very Australian film. My God, this film is so Aussie. Like, <laughs> it really is. This and Cracker Jack to me, are the two big Aussie films, so. Yeah. But what this film has already is some really, really well-formed characters from the get-go because of the level of exposition that we get because it wasn't too much, it wasn't too little. And we have narration on top of that from certain characters that, certain character, uh -huh, that sort of let us know what they're thinking, what the family situation is, and they give us a bit more background instead of exposition. Um, you have some really, really well-formed characters right off the get-go. So you can build on top of that as this film progresses. And it does it really, really nicely as well. Um, it's not in your face, it's quite subtle. Um, and it's not too over the top, in my opinion. These characters are so well formed that when they make decisions in this movie, you feel like you've lived with them and their decisions make sense. It feels like what happens happens organically. It's really, really, really nice to see that. I'm blanking, what's it called? Airport, idiot. So the castle is a story of the underdog. Uh, one man trying to save his family home from big developers that are trying to move him and his neighbors uh, out of their residential area. And that uh, uh, residential area, their homes, their houses, uh, right next to an airport. So it's unbelievably loud, inconvenient and annoying. And the only people that would live around there are characters themselves. And even though he's gonna be fairly compensated and all that sort of stuff, he, he still doesn't want to leave, which makes sense. It's not a house, it's a home. What 
an absolute ending to this film. The little guy won. He banded together with his family, with his weird, quirky, colorful friends that like also live near him. Like it's just, it was such a good ending. It was so good. It was so fucking good. The, <laughs> had the most like Aussie victory I think I've ever seen in a movie before and it was him just going. <laughs> At the very end of the film, he says, when they win, he says to the other lawyers, he says, bad luck, dickhead. <laughs> it's so fucking Aussie. It's so Aussie. Just be like, oh, bad luck, you dickhead. Or bad luck, you wanker. <laughs> I love it. I laughed so hard. Oh, it's a very good movie. It's very good. <laughs> a sweet and warm film about the underdog and the refusal to give in to the man told by one lovable family, an all-time classic Australian film that more than deserves its status. Um, I'm gonna give The Castle eight out of 10. It's a very, very good movie. It's a very, very good story. And to me, that's the most important thing. It's not about flashy action sequences and giant cinematics and it's not it's not about that it's not about how good a film looks it's about how good the story is you can forgive a bad looking film if it's got a really rich good story at the start of it and it's got some good acting along the way and this this had all that it, it was good it it has a grounded look everything it's a very good film that's what <clears throat> just leave it as eight out of ten well, that's that <laughs> It's the vibe, and, uh, no, that's it, it's the vibe. I rest my case. That was sensational.